say I'm attentive to prayer. I'm sold out in worship. I'm prepared by prophecy to be all that God has called me to be. Come on, are those ordinary words? Or are those words true? Well, if those words are true, there is one response. CCI Global, stretch your hands to heaven and begin to stir up yourself in this room. Begin to pray in other tongues and charge yourself to stir up the residue, the deposits that God has in store for you this afternoon. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to rev up those angels in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to stir up the deposits. Begin to stir up yourself. 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 There is more. Stir up yourself. There is more. Stir up yourself. There is more. Begin to stir up yourself in the, in the Holy Ghost. Begin to stir up yourself in the Holy Ghost. Begin to stir up yourself in the Holy Ghost. Begin to stir up yourself in the Holy Ghost. Begin to stir up yourself. Let there be a stare in this room. Kalabaraka janda raka sende libaya. Reka sende reka shadana matais. Lega kende rebe rebe kende lebotos. Lebe reka shadabara bara bayades. Laba reka nde reka talas. Lega rebo shende reba kabarades. Leba rebe 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 bayades. Lende rebe kende rebe rebos. Is there anybody who's ready? Kala da rekan sende rebakatas. Leba rebataba ya barabades. Lende rebata barabadabas. Jande rekakana barabadabas. Limbre kande rio konde robotaya. Leba rebarabadabas. Begin to dial it up. Libra kande rebas. Jande rebakande rebados. Leba rekade barabadabas. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for all to be. Kaba raba raba sande raba kanda raba sh. Libra raba raba kanda raba kanda raba sh. Leba raba raba sande raba raba sh. Kaba raba raba ya. Begin to stir up glory from your inside. Cause out of your belly. Out of your belly, out of your belly, rivers, 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 rivers. Because after today, all will see that you've been with God. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. This is no time to be distracted. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to stare, 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 stare. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Come down, rabba, rabba, rabba. The Bible says, be not drunk with wine where it is excess, but be filled, be filled, be filled. There is something to do about it. I can't be filled because I can take from within and put upon. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Rekad na baratash. La gareka sande le batales. Le barabakanda rabashanda rabarabarabas. La barabarabarabarabarabas. Kareka ta barabarabayatas. Zende robota barabos. Kada rabadabas. Kada rabadash. Begin to brood over the words you heard this morning. I'm the Eden of God. I'm the Eden of God. I'm the Eden of God. Because of me, because of me, my world will not need to search for God. I'm the ambassador of God. Wherever I am, that's me. That's me. That's me. Jende rebe 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 kondes le ba ra ba ra ba ra ba ra ba s zenga re ba ra ba ra ba s le ba ra ba ra ba s CCI Global you got a few more minutes let there be a stare in this room zande rakakatas 
Zalabadabas. Yes, yes, yes. Pick it up, pick it up. Mande Resa Kada Bahaya. Manjada da Barabadabas. Pick it up, pick it up. Zureba Kada Barabadabas. Manda Barabaraba Kada Rebadabas. Zebere Barabadabas. Kada Barabadabas. Karabadabas, I'm the light of this world. Rekata barabas, shanda barabahayas. Lebere barabas, agada barabadabas, sambarabadas. Abala barabadabayatas. Let there be a stare in this room. Zembere barabadabas. Lebere barabayatas. Let there be a stare in this room. Labara barabara barabas. Zengara barabayatas. Alebere barabas. At the end, at the end, it's gonna be obvious to all. Bragada baraba, shada baraba. Begin to pray in other tongues right now. Begin to use the technology available to you via the Spirit. Kabaraka kadas, la baraba baraba, sada baraba, kende baraba baraba, ala baraba kada baraba, lede kara baraba, sada baraba, ala baraba kada bas. Adabayatash, God is cooking me up for something. God is cooking me for something. At the end of this encounter on this mountain, it's gonna be obvious to all. It's gonna be obvious to all. My prophet will show. I see it, I see it, I see it. At the end of this program, it's going to be obvious to all that Moses has been with God. This is that meeting where there will be an upward shift, where there will be an acceleration, a leap. It's all God has said about me this year. Oh my God, if that you begin to stare, 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 Carlos. Ala barabara bashada yatas, le barabara barabayades, zekaretos, zekaretos, zekaretos. Zelekayas Shalabaletebo Sakadabahaya Sakalabaraba Shades 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 Zikete Katabarabarabayadas Alabarabayada Can you see it? Zuzea 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 Kabre Katabaraba Shadas Legatabarabarabarabarabarabas Begin to take from within. Begin to take from within. Begin to take from within. No word of God that has been said concerning my house will fall to the ground. Zash, 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 zash. Kalabaruata kaselas. Lebareka kadebaregedebas. All across the room, Zuskata Barakataya, Zeriakataya, Zorias, Zorias, Shara Bayekos, Rokote Bayekatayas, Jekaya, 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 Zala, Zala. Begin to roar in the Holy Ghost. Begin to roar. Begin to roar. You want to lift up your head and around to someone. Baleko siyata pali anda baru atukaya. Ziveruante bele ne kuvele shotole na kali apaya. For everyone that has come for more, ere de besu teke peli ando brasto vele hatai. Ready to go deeper and deeper in the Lord. Sabarada 
the more I know you, the more I want to know you. Sabato sekai. Aradaban teleka sudege beliatoi. I want to know you more and more. Ooh. Come on, lift up your hands to the heavens. Ebelete ko sapai la kando. Shada ba sekande le kando ndera. Drunk of you, fountain of life, and now we're right here. We want more of you. You feel the sky, till all the flowing, and now we're right here. We want more of you. I've drunk of you, fountain of life. You feel us. I'll take the parrot and tell you about 
Stop just praying the Holy Ghost right now. E de bela compra tale behind de velima na na cobre a tan sota. Join the 24 elders to sing, Lord. We join the angels to cry, Lord.
go deeper. Ask them, are you ready to go deeper? Ask the person beside you, you believe there's more. Are you ready to press for more? All right, now we'll be taking a confession. And I want you to see the confession you're about to take as bullets for your God. Take it as words for your meditation and images for your brooding. Are you ready? So don't just say them casually. Take note of what you're saying and get ready to use them to press for more. Are you ready? Say today, I experience an upward shift in my devotional life. I will never recover from it. Say there's fire on my altar today. There's fire on my altar every day. So I prioritize intimacy with God in my prayer life. As I pray now, I'm strengthened in the will of God. Take it again. As I pray now, I am strengthened in the will of God. Take it out one more time louder and clear. As I pray now, I am strengthened in the will of God. As I pray now, I persevere. I am focused. I am fervent. I am enveloped in consecration. Say, by the oppression of the Spirit on my inside, by the oppression of the Spirit on my inside, I am stirred up. Say, I stir up life changing power. Now, stretch for both ends, stretch for both ends. Say, power to heal the sick, power to raise the dead, power to uproot kingdoms of wickedness, and establish kingdom of God. In this nation, say God is making a name for himself in my life. And by my prayers today, I, am, I align myself with God's will. I am mounting up to my full capacity in Christ. Come on, you take it again. I am mounting up to my full capacity in Christ. Say, I am ready. Say, I am ready. Say, I am ready. Now you shout glory and you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Use the words you just spoke. Use them as bullets for your guns. Sele kapalia na makatalia kapale. Rinda paketeli. Sele kepelia ria makataya. Rada bakatalia mane. Zeleria bakatali. Sele kapali. Radendo pradiana mata. Sele meketelia. Rende baka. Rada basalamate. Zindo prakatalia, rade palaria kapa, zene meketeli, indo bondo pa, andelia kapali, zeleria ndonde, ikata pali, rade pakusonde, lira baka salamai, rade kandom ronde, zeleke paliaka, radea bakatali, radamboko sombeleme. Ziliaka rande para zene meketeli indila makapronde zene meketeli pai rade kapaliata rada baka sombeleni indala pradia katai rabade ende kondo bendeya aria kapalia kasaya kande pondo sombre see yourself experiencing upward shift upward shift. Force for advancement. I can de kapali arabataya. Nendo rekepe ilia kapai rada bali adabata. Zele mokonde i kapali zenende andubra radia katani mene mokoponde le mai rade kapali zombonde kani inrande kai rada bataya. I kando pakino embeleria kapaya zele kando rade kambo lo meketeya. Strengthen, 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 strengthen to do the will of God. Zele kepele kimanonde iria kapa zale kapani indeli amata rade pakutele mondo. 
Zebelekete, Iriakapani, Indu Pakatali, Zenen Radiapa, Zemenekete, Inde Borumba Taya, Zebelakun Randi, Zelekepea, Ariakapaliata, Ebelekete, Zenemon Bondombe, Arada Bakataya. As you pray, stir up, stir up, life-changing power. Zeleke peli ando prate, zeleka palia riana mate, zenende bene ika palia rade kapalia kata, zele endelia ya arianda bani inde kapali zeleke peli abai rude belekete. Ina kapali katani mande kano predika sombele kata zeleke penyo ira kapane zene kapali ata valia kaprunde sondeli inde la kapuni ana radaba zeleke te mende kopokotelia zeka paka sombe can you see what you're saying are you brooding over what you become. Are you brooding and looking? Do you have imaginations? Pictures of what you become by the reason of this service. Leka pando salaba redekete mende la kataye. Can you see a more powerful you at the end of this meeting? Can you see a more equipped you at the end of this meeting? Seke peli akapa rade pati zene ketelia kembo kopeleya rada bakatali zine mombrunde katiga rube neketelia ande yadaba zeka nunde ira pakataya ende kombonde do you see yourself uprooting kingdoms of wickedness uprooting kingdom of wickedness. And establish the kingdom of God. I can do by Rada Baka Son de Lemaye Zeneketekete and Akabaya. Do you see yourself aligned to the will of God? Zele Kapani and Eliata Imbron da Kapali Zemeneni Ilata Bale Rade Bakato Imbondo Brenia. Zekando branda la ata rada bakasete ilendra balia a rada sapa e kapali kateke indeleria daba zenemoko pondele mai bala kapaleriande zeke pele kato ikande baliata apradia kombre ileria ileria pakatego irapatego indeleria kapa zeneke pe embondon radia kapane zepeleketea ariada bakatale what are your pictures of meditation right now eke pele kapaliata i know your your mind is unfruitful but you have an empty mind Picture what you become, brood over it. Kele mando na bali, ikande katali, rube neketele, irata bondende, irakapalia, atalia, valeria katano, indele kopeli, zenenda la haya. Zebo brondoi, eria patai, zeria kombra ateko, ikandu balari ataka. Balako poko pele peni ireki andom bronde lehata kombo rombe leka ukandi apali akofeneni ino pariata kupe zefeli akondradiga balakatali rando pakeno inde bronda hastos you have less than a minute make it count make it count make it count kapala kapale Release those words now. Release those words. Release those bullets now. Pelekepe, embondombe. I am ready. I am ready. I am ready. Mounting up. 
to my full capacity. I am ready. 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 In a makapo, area Monday, he can't do pele, he can't do pele, area kapalataya, ambele kumbondia. I am ready. I am ready. So I begin to say, I'm ready. I am ready. I am ready. I am ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? I am ready. Now rejoice. Rejoice like you know that your life is about to change forever.
Father, we honor you this afternoon. Thank you for how you started with us in the morning, what you're about to do right now. Thank you for building yourself a more fervent altar of devotion in our lives, that you would take your place and be number one priority. We dethrone everything competing for your space so that you will reign unchallenged, unrivaled in our hearts. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Glory to God. Well, how are you all doing? Praise the Lord. You may please be seated. Minister Eben is in the building. Good to see you, brotherly. Thank you. Uh, we might have a surprise for you this afternoon. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. have your attention everybody so before I go into the sermon I want to say something very quickly in the spirit of accountability and feedback I want to give you feedback on our property search yes so um, at the reboot camp we showed you a property that we had our eyes on um, unfortunately we had already negotiated, done everything, but we had reason to pull back. And I can't really give you the full details because um, for some reasons. I can't give you the full details, but all I will say is this. When you take on a property legally, whatever liability the property has, you inherit. Some of you know what I'm saying. Um, and so we discovered some things that we shouldn't be involved in. And uh, I'm just saying, um, third party involvement and some other things. Bring, bring that down. You want to shed? Now, now you want to shed. <laughs> you know, so. That's why we pulled, pulled out from that. But you know, all things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. In hindsight, I don't think it's too early to say, I thank God we didn't take that one because we found something bigger. about twice the size. Um, and let me, let me say this. If we had taken that property, we, we wouldn't have been able to use it for reboot camp this year. We won't. Because that place sits 5,000. And even last year, we were way, way more than that. I mean, this is just deeper Lagos, and we're about 5,000 here. So... Um, But it seemed like a good opportunity because it was plug and play. It had everything, chairs, you know, and all of that. But it, the size did worry me. Um, but this one <laughs> is about 30 plots of land. Yes. 30 plots of land. For some reason, I won't say exactly where, but not too far from here. I, I know why I'm saying it. I don't know, see... You don't understand. <laughs> before someone rush, go pay before us. <laughs> it's somewhere. <laughs> but, I mean, when you see the place, you'll be shocked. Like, how did God hide this for us? Do you understand? It's incredible. It's incredible. It costs shower. Do you understand? Not to be competitive or anything, but just to help you appreciate what I believe God is about to do. If and when we get that place, it will be the biggest church property in Lagos. Yes. To be the biggest church property in Lagos. And... Um, by the grace of God, we'll be paying in about two weeks' time. Yes. Hallelujah. I'll be seeing you. Okay, one week. Ah, I thought your faith was even shaking. No, no, that. Now, me, there was in about two weeks' time, and they've said they don't want part payment, they want down. <laughs> I mean... I mean, it's about three billion. So, if yeah. 
Hallelujah. Hype your neighbor. See, hype your neighbor. See, all this fine cloth you've been wearing. <laughs> it's time, oh. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> Help me hype your neighbor. Pilonia. Oh, you're the catch. I'm serious, oh, do you need mic? I need I on help me help your neighbor. Who be jet? Who be jet? Maybe during offering with the song will be she might know what you're talking about. She might know what you're talking about. You can do it in party, you can do it for God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But listen, um, we, we, we have about half of it, and God is going to do the rest. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, all these announcements, if, I'm, if you're like, Pastor, why are you, why are you bothering yourself? Well, Amen. Come to my office on Monday. What am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? What, what am I using time to do? I will be there. I will be there no matter what. No matter what. <laughs> Hallelujah. But honestly, I'm just glad about what God is about to do. Can I express my faith? We will do reboot camp on that land. (laughs) Reboot camp this year, this December. First week. Do you understand? You know, Pastor Nath has already told me, he said, I must come and blow. He (laughs) said, He said, don't worry, he said, I must come. Hallelujah. You know what? Can you just thank God for it? Just thank God for it. Father, we thank you. Great provider, we thank you. We give you the praise for what you're about to do. Thank you for making your name for yourself with our lives. We give you the praise. We return all the glory, all the honor to you in Jesus' mighty name. Say loud, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get into the teaching of today. So I'll give you more details in the evening. I think we'll show you a clip. Any surrounding building, cut it. Uh, so that's... Uh, <laughs> or we should we just show them from up. Okay, we'll screenshot it. Okay. All right. And we'll just draw a red circle. This is the place. <laughs> I know I hear, yeah. I know I hear anything. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, that's how the Potakot place. I just had a stay in my spirit. I said, pay for that thing today, today, today. They say, hey, bureaucracy to check. Pay now, now. The next day, one big company came with almost twice the money, was begging. The people now came and said, sorry, can we? I said, no. (laughs) (laughs) It's gone. (laughs) No. (laughs) Oh, Tilo. (laughs) It's gone. (laughs) We don't pay five years. So, uh, it's over. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to say this. The scope of deeper, I want you to understand why we have the programs that we have. Reboot Camp is majorly evangelical. 
And that's why the first night we must teach on the gospel no matter what. We must teach on the gospel the next morning, prayer stretch, afternoon, sanctification, evening, power night, and like, like that. Because the scope is evangelical. Deeper, as the name implies, is for consecration, is for you to get deeper in the things of God, for you to examine yourself. The Bible says examine yourself except, except you be reprobate. Except you be reprobate. It's an opportunity for, for you to strengthen hands that hang low and feeble, strengthen feeble knees, and run with grace, grace and patience the race set before you. Say loud, amen. amen. And so, if you came to deeper with your prayer life wobbly, you must get your prayer life back. Say loud, amen. amen. And you must, excuse this expression, you must feel after God. I know that you know by faith that he's with you, he's everywhere, but you know what I mean when you feel after God. You know, where you have that pure and holy passion and then just this consciousness of his presence, it makes a difference. Hey, my God, I forgot to say this in the morning. There's someone, you were here in the morning, you saw a vision, you were in Yaba or thereabout in the afternoon, and then you slept off, but your eyes were still seeing the room. And in a vision, I walked to you. I prayed for you and said some things. I forgot to say that in the morning. If you're here, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. You saw a vision in the afternoon, Yaba, in the environs. And I walked to you. If, if that's you, wave your hand so that I can know it's you. If you're not here, just remind me to say it again in the evening. Oh, I need to be writing these things down. Okay, ah. Uh. <laughs> Wonderful. What? One, two, uh. <laughs> Where were you? I was in in the forest by Luke Camp. Yeah, by center. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. I now know why the Lord had to mention it. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, you are exempted. Tama trophe trate capolo trekino de cas. I stretch my hands to you and declare no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment against you is condemned. I separate you from any spell and enchantment in your lineage and your family enjoys the liberty that you now enjoy. Amen. The strong man is judged Amen. and the anointing is upon you Amen. from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. It's an anointing to prosper. Nothing will be able to stop you. Touch! <laughs> In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Exempted. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Help him up, please. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Help him up. Just help him. Now, listen. 
When it comes to conviction, our final authority and focus will forever be the scriptures. Amen, somebody? Amen. And you see, when it comes to people's experiences or visions, I don't really, I don't really pay attention to them. Because, you know, <laughs> especially people who claim to see heaven, see hell, a lot of them lie. I hope you know. You know, there was one boy. He said they went to heaven and that the angels were entertaining him. They said, what song should we sing for you? So and I said, sing, we, 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 we rock you. You know, and, uh, you know, and all of <laughs> To be clear, they wrote books, made movies, made millions of dollars. Then when the boy grew up, he now said he didn't see anything. No. That is his parents that told him what to say. But the repentance was without restitution. He didn't return the money. <laughs> you, know, you know, but sometimes I don't pity the body of Christ. It's good for you. You too, you know, go read Bible. <laughs> there are some things you hear, you will know that ah, this one is malaria. <laughs> <laughs> now, malaria. Now, now malaria caused this one. <laughs> now, malaria. I don't doubt you didn't see something, new, but it's not heaven. You went somewhere. So it's not heaven. <laughs> you know, that's why you need to read your Bible carefully. You know, and I can tell you that generally, people who have had genuine experiences are not even quick to share. I can tell you that one thing for sure. You can discern that by Paul's caution. There was such a man caught up in the third heaven. He's talking about himself in third person. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. You know, and there's, there's a sacredness to it. Sacredness. A lot of funny things happen in the body of Christ. That's how there was a woman who claimed to went, go to heaven and then she said, um, Pastor Adiboye, God said, Pastor Adiboye is not serving God. Bishop Oyedepo is not serving God. So there was a pastor who doesn't like these two men of God. So he was happy and called the crusade and played the video. He didn't know that there would be part two. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so in part one that he played, he said, I've been warning you about these men. See, someone has seen it now by revelation. You know, so in part two, she mentioned in other names and mentioned his name too, that he's not a man of God. So the man wanted to come and say she did not go. She went to. She went. <laughs> you know, go change your mind. He's correct. Do you understand? <laughs> you know, you know, at the, at the end of the day, you will just read your Bible well. You just read your Bible well. When people say they went to he hell and they saw people that were there because they wore trousers. <laughs> Ladies wore trousers. Listen, make no mistake. The Bible advocates for decency in dressing. Is that clear? The definition of decency is that it covers you up. And you can make an argument that there are a lot of trousers that are way more decent than many skirts. Mm. I'm sure you know, Abby. You know, you know pocket square? That thing that men put in their suits. Uh, hey, Pastor Kelechi, raise your own up. That thing that men use in their suits, that small material. I, I hope you know people use that kind of material to sew skirts. I say, sorry, I miss so gown, half yard. <laughs> <laughs> then they would tie two ropes like this. <laughs> if you're a female engineer, which is more decent, trouser or skirt? If you're climbing up a ladder, <laughs> to decorate. 
you know, there are some things here eh, that is not just a doctrinal problem, it's an intelligence problem. <laughs> if you have a problem with trousers, you have not traveled out. You have not. Go to Canada, code will change your conviction. Nobody will tell you. You will see new light in the world. That, ah, there's nothing wrong with trousers now. <laughs> code never agree. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> he gets on Rema, he goes to see for a Kurodu. No. <laughs> Trust. Trust her is a sin. Uh, why? That's why. <laughs> Ikorodu, maybe this is a sign. Maybe God wants us to open a branch. People are plenty. Yeah. You know when the Bible says the uttermost parts, yeah. <laughs> Jerusalem, Judea. Don't worry, we are getting there. Yeah. Mm, Jerusalem, Judea, then the uttermost <laughs> parts. <of the> end. <laughs> I promise you, give us 18 months. <laughs> Not more than 18 months will be at Zikorodo. Is that okay? Celebrate now. <laughs> if you want it to be sooner, uh, that was drop. <laughs> Next week. <That's laughs> uh, we slowed down our church planting project to consolidate. We're trying to, by the grace of God, invest in properties, and we need that so that we won't be giving all our money to landlords. Amen, somebody. I said all of that to say this, and I want to move with the speed of light. This is going to be a very simple and elementary um, teaching. But there was this particular encounter, a testimony I read of. First and foremost, it tallies with many things the Bible says. Many things the Bible says. If you're a good Bible student, you hear his testimony, you just see a lot of consistency. And then number two, this guy is not a religious person, you know, from his hair, his look. He just died and by the grace of God, he went to hell, went to heaven, came back. And he said some things that were intriguing. The first thing he said, I, I, I try to itemize it and I want to move with the speed of light now. He talked about four things. He didn't itemize it that way, but I just itemized it so that it would be, it'd be fast. The first thing he talked about in hell, of course, as you can anticipate, is that there will be physical torment. He said it was extremely hot and excruciating. You could hardly breathe, you know, and all of that. He talked about that. That we all know. And then he said the second thing was that the torment was also emotional. A lot of people don't talk about that. There was emotional torment. And he said, think about the worst experience you have ever had in life. He says, multiply it by 100 or maybe 1,000 and imagine being in that state perpetually for all eternity. So it was beyond the physical torment and torture it was the emotional torment and torture. And then he said the third thing, there will be this guilt that comes from this sudden realization that God did love you after all. You will just know. You will just know. It looks like the scales fall off your eyes and you know, God did love me after all. I never received this love. And that will also be a guilt and a pain in your heart for all eternity. And then number four, just the fact that there is no way out. When you go through trials in life, sometimes at least you just know that there will be a way out. It will pass. Even things that there is no way out of, maybe God forbid you lose a loved one, at least as time goes on, the hurt and the pain is not as much as when it first happened. Not in hell. 
not in hell. This constant state of hopelessness. Do you know what it means to feel hopeless? To feel helpless? And then you're in that state perpetually. And whilst all of this is happening, his dad is praying for him on the earth. And then suddenly, he's just sucked in to a new atmosphere. He, something dragged him up and then he found himself in heaven straight in front of the throne room of God. Right in front of the throne of God. And he mentioned a lot of interesting things. First and foremost, the light from that throne is purer than anything you've ever seen. If you look at the rays from any light in the world, you can see some particles, but this one is just clear. And that's how he described it. And there is such an instant reverence in that place. He said there is like a soft thunder that you can hear. A soft thunder. It's soft, but you, you can hear it, and it's just reverence. Oh. And a godly type of fear emanating from the presence of God. But that's not what intrigued me the most. He said, just standing there before God, just standing there before God, he said, think of the best thing that can ever happen to you. Best thing that can ever happen to you. Multiply it by a thousand, maybe 10,000, maybe one million. He said, just standing there was a better feeling than that. That the fact that you were just standing there, it was the most fulfilling thing in the world. Fulfilling. And you don't want to do anything else. You just want to stand there, you're at his beck and call, waiting for him to ask you to do anything. You just, you just don't, you're just like, what do I do? What do I? Everybody in that space is constantly waiting for an instruction. Like, I, I'm going to obey. Just, just tell me what to do. Everybody is constantly in that phase. Every other ambition dies. You just want to be there. Let me tell you why this is important. Because you see, you can have <laughs> a religious kind of ambition that you hide your selfishness under. You know, when the Lord gave Saul an instruction, go into that place, destroy everything, destroy all the animals, and then he brought animals and said he brought them as sacrifice to the Lord. You know, you can use religious reasons to cover your selfishness. Lord, I want to be the biggest businessman and I will give you all the glory. You know, there was an entrepreneurship class I was in years ago and they asked everybody, what are your goals? And they asked one lady, what is your goal? She said she wants to own every business in the world. I'm like, you know, go mind your business. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. <laughs> so, so I, I mean, why would you want that? Why would you want that? I mean, I'm, I'm, I can say that because I know she knows better now. I hope she knows better now. You know, but you have all those kind of desires. I want to be the most famous musician. I want to be the biggest pastor. I want to be whatever it is. But when you are there, all you want to do is serve. Are you listening to me? And then he said something that was very striking. He said, the moment you stand there, you don't remember anything. Now, when you're thinking from the lens of your current status and situation, that seems like, wow, really? He said, you don't remember friends, you don't remember family. The moment you stand in the presence of God. He said, the, when he came back to the world, he was upset. <laughs> Everybody was shouting, yeah, praise the Lord. He was angry. <laughs> he was angry. And that tallies with many people who have had near-death experiences. They were just pissed. If you've seen God, you don't want to see anyone else. Hallelujah. You know, a lot of people ask the question, what will heaven be like? And maybe you have this secret concern. Wouldn't it be boring? 
I know you don't want to seem carnal and you, you, you pretend like you've never thought about it before. You want to be boring. Because you have a perspective of fun and enjoyment. And guess what? The person who gave you the ability to have desires, to desire good things, like when you taste the best ice cream you've ever tasted, and you enjoy it, and you, you, you relish the experience, it's because he gave you a tongue, and he gave you the, uh, the ability to appreciate the goodness of it. Are you aware he could, make, he could have made food like injection? Very painful but necessary. <laughs> that, that every day, you just, hey, here we go again. <laughs> the one that would have been interesting is if sex was painful. Yes, now. Imagine God. <laughs> now, I, I don't know if there are people who are young, so I will just leave it there. <laughs> you go ration them. Um, um, wait, how many children? <laughs> how many children are we having? <laughs> hey, honey. Well, yeah. He created these things within the right parameters for your enjoyment. Think about even salvation, Ephesians 2, 7. It just gives you a scope of every other thing that God created for enjoyment. It says that in the ages to come, you, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ. That meaning when you experience the goodness of God, either in salvation or in life, he wants you to just say, wow, God is so good. All things bright and beautiful. The Lord God made them all. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen something in nature and you're like, some people say there's no God. I remember flying back from Tanzania through Kilimanjaro, 30,000 feet thereabouts in the sky. And then the pilot says, look to your right. That's the top of the mountain Kilimanjaro, above the clouds. Oh my God, I can't explain the sight. But just imagine high up there, and above the clouds, something is peeping like this. Um, like, that's, that's the mountain. Wow. God is amazing. And I'm also like, men are crazy. People, they climb this thing. <laughs> People, they mad, though. <laughs> human beings, human beings, white people in particular. They just, they do things. Have you ever seen discoveries that you wonder, how did you discover? <laughs> what were you looking for that you, that you discovered this? <laughs> God is amazing. And so when the person who created every desire tells you that when you see me, he calls himself chief joy. <laughs> Oh my God, you're not listening to me. He calls himself chief joy. Of every delight you've ever experienced in life, nothing will be more fulfilling just to stand in his presence. There will be no greater privilege, no greater honor, no greater, no greater experience in life. Just to bow, just to serve. When he says, at my right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Please believe it. And most importantly, please make sure you are there. Make sure you are there. Make sure you are there. The 
The Bible says that the 24 elders, they do not rest. Come on. Listen, and I'm telling you, the, the energy emanating from him will give you all the delightful interest for all eternity without complaint. To just serve, to just worship. A little caveat there. The final destiny of man is not heaven. You know that, right? There will be a new earth and Christ will reign and Christ will reign. Hallelujah. Hopefully it won't be Nigeria again. <laughs> like, not that I don't like Nigeria, but variety, variety. Just, just shake things up. <laughs> just shake things up a little. <laughs> you know, a new heaven, a new earth, and Christ will reign as king. But the difference is every single thing you do, you achieve, you do in the name of Christ for his glory, for the fame of his name. What a life that would be. You don't know when that would be. I know your parents told you that um, during their time, they told them Jesus is coming soon. But that's, that's exactly the point. That when that day comes, people will just be like, ah, ah, it'll, be, it'll be like the days of Noah. The Bible says people were marrying, giving to marriage. You know. I don't know why everybody's saying, hmm. I, I was just looking this way, you know? <laughs> and then suddenly, you know, that's why I tell you, young people, get married on time. Oh. You've been wasting time. Just imagine, finally, here comes the bride. Yeah, that time. You know, the, you know the interesting thing? The moment you get there, she just say, brother, how are you? <laughs> oh, dear Lord. <laughs> you say, my spouse, no, I'm married to Jesus. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> Hallelujah. What if it's sooner than you think? Just what if? Just what if? Just what if? Hallelujah. You know, it reminds me of the saying of Jesus. I say to you, not everyone here will sleep until they see. Just, just what if, just what if this is the generation, this is that generation. Just what if. At the end of the day, just stay ready, right? See, anywhere, whether it's now, we will serve either in this world or in the world to come. We are ready, amen. And we'll take as many people as possible with us. But I want to tell you if you're here and you're not born again, you must be born again. You must. You must. You must. There are literally a thousand and one things I, I, I can teach. You know, by the grace of God, knowledge is not. It's not scarce in this house. If you want me to confuse you, I can confuse you. <laughs> I, can, I can tell you things that you go home and say, that's deep. Then I say, what did he teach? You say, it was deep. <laughs> As per deeper now. <laughs> you all enable me, stop it. 
But anyway, this is the crux of what we're saying, and I, I just want to cap this with this. How do you prepare for heaven? Now, of course, all you have to do is believe in the finished work of Christ. Amen, somebody? The Bible says, by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Jesus died for your sins, shed his blood for the remission of your sins. And the Bible says, whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Say loud, amen. amen. But the point I want to make from telling you all that I said prior is this. Everything that you would effortlessly experience in heaven, you should experience on earth by faith. Amen, somebody. You see, I gave you the analogy of the Jerusalem temple, the Old Testament temple. And think about this, that the most holy place was a simulation of heaven. Remember that, right? But think about it, and it, it gives you an understanding of priesthood, that a man who of course was a type of Christ, but nonetheless, a man serving as the priest, the high priest of that year, will walk through the outer court into the inner court, almost literally into heaven. Into heaven. And then he turns his back and he comes back to the people. Do you realize it's, it's as though he has been to heaven? This is why Moses comes down from the mountain and his face is radiant he has been with God 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 and sometimes you have the privilege where it looks like natural experiences and activities and limitations are suspended Time is compressed, or you, or some things that will li limit you normally. You, you, now he's on the mountain forty days. He didn't die. Didn't die of hunger. That's the presence of God. So the question is, are we really preparing for heaven if thirty minutes is too long a prayer time? When you get to heaven, just being in the presence of God will be all the energy you need. But I'm saying on the earth, you have to live by faith what will be your experience in heaven. And so I must enjoy the presence of God. I must. I must. This is beyond devotion time. Are you listening to me? Can I tell you something? I have discovered that the people who will really do great things for God in this world are people, let me use this expression, who are spiritual nerds. There are some people, they have Bible study time, and that's cool. But you know what God's plan is? In him, I live and move and have my being. Meaning it's, it's part of your life. Beyond that time, that regiment of Bible study, you, 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 when we check your search history is Bible, when we, when we check your phone is Bible, when we, when we, if, we, if we could cut a slice out of you, scriptures will come out. Beyond prayer time. You are talking to people and you take a break like Jesus and you say, Father, glorify your name. And he replies. He replies. Is that secret place or public place now? <laughs> you, you live there. Are you getting what I'm saying? And by the help of God, God can help you press into that. What if prayer becomes a delight? Prayer becomes a delight. You live it. What if indeed your ministry to the people is an offshoot of being in that holy place in Eden for as long as possible? 
you come out with your face radiant. You come out with life-changing instructions. You're not going to wait till the final fulfillment. There must be a slice of heaven in you right now. And it must show forth in your devotion. Say loud, amen. Amen. It must show forth in your devotion. Show forth in your devotion. It must show forth in your consecration, in your interests and in your priorities. You know what Paul says to the church at Colossae, Colossians chapter 3, from verse 1. He says, if you then be risen with Christ. Oh my God, are you listening to me? If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things. Please help me nudge the person by your side. Say, seek those things. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above. Can I tell you something? This is deeper so I can say it. Sometimes I'm reading a lot of stuff in the Bible about theology, the knowledge of God, beautiful discoveries in the Word of God, beautiful discoveries. But are you aware there is very little theology in the church these days? Because everyone wants a sermon application, it must apply. How many people are still interested in knowing God for God's sake? It spoke to my emotions. It touched me. It, who, all this knowledge that God revealed about himself. Who is going to learn about it? Who is it for? For angels? Is the Bible out of vogue? You have to understand, there's a difference. Not every Bible study is a performance. In fact, Bible study should not be a performance at all. You know, let me just use one very natural example. (laughs) You know, when I was doing my MBA, Master in Business Administration, I discovered something. All the interesting lecturers were graduate assistants or junior lecturers. All the professors were boring. Some of you know what I'm saying. And that's when I knew charisma is not a show of knowledge. You can be very expressive and not truly, in the grand scheme of things, be deep. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so it's one of the measures of growth to sift beyond all the theatrics and to be interested in this stuff, in this stuff. Please, are you listening to me? In this stuff. You know, there are some books I read now. eh? They will bore you. I promise you that. You know, there was one very arrogant guy he got to a point, he said, it reminds me of the saying in Greek, and when he did four sentences in Greek, he didn't translate. <laughs> he expects, oh yes, he expects that if you are reading that level of material, you should be able to read it. <laughs> it reminds me of the saying. I look at him, I say, ah, no be your fault. Some of you have read physics books six times. There are some topics you had to read again and again. You've never done that with Bible. You just skip through the pages. Ah, I don't understand. Oh, Father, thank you for today. You (laughs) 
and you are missing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Hallelujah. And God wants you to get deeper. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above at the right hand of God and set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth. And then it gets to a point you begin to abominate pettiness. There's some drama you won't have interest in. At some point, you should outgrow it. You should outgrow it. Go for gold. Go for things that have eternal value. And please, let me prefix what I'm saying with a very important balance. Let me say this. When the church is dealing on subjects like this, they almost always dwell on either extreme. Almost always. Almost always. The people who are teaching stuff like this will now become so transcendent. Take the whole world and give me Jesus. You are more holy than God. God created the earth. Say have dominion. You say take it back. <laughs> it is God who created the world and said take. You say take. <laughs> and they always feel they are better than others. Always trying to measure who prays more, who studies more. Is it not stressful? Being, being a hypocrite is stressful because it's hypocrisy. Please, are you with me? So you must learn to read the Bible in balance. So when you look at the text, for instance, like 1 Timothy 6, he says, you brought nothing into this world, you're taking nothing out. Very powerful. Godliness with contentment is gain. The word translated gain means profit. It means like you earn something. Not every profit comes from selling. Are you getting what I'm saying? Like just following God and being content. He says that's gain. Are you listening to me? And that's an important message. An important message. What if we came to a point in the church where as long as you are in the will of God, you are satisfied with your process, you may not be where you want to be, you're not where you used to be, glory be to God. Do you understand what I'm saying? I am doing my best and my best is good enough. I will keep learning how to improve myself. I see my neighbor driving a more fancy car. I'm happy for him. But I do not lose my sleep. I, are you getting what I'm saying? Where you understand that he that has everything and does not have Christ has nothing. And he that has nothing and has Christ has everything. And he that has everything and has Christ does not have more than he that has Christ alone. Christ becomes your measure of value. Come on, are you with me? So the Bible says not to trust in set uncertain riches. It's a mentality. It's a world view. Not to act like what you drive. Not to act like what you drive. There's a man of God. You know. <laughs> anyway, don't worry about that. You know, when I was starting out in ministry, I avoided any man of God that would make me get like a plague. Avoided like a plague. Do you know what it means? If you are pastoring 30 people and you are doing it diligently, you think that's a small thing? Ah, they lie to you. If you think you are small, you think you are a small pastor, you are in charge of five souls, five, and then you are faithful, training them in the Lord, you have a luxury that I don't have. You hear they are going through stuff. You can go to their house, pray for them, stand for them. There is a way you go about it in the sight of God. You'll be doing more than I am because your work will be more thorough. Are you listening to me? And I'm, I'm not saying this to impress you. Sometimes I miss those days. Miss those days. When things were simpler, 
Uka was uh, in ushering. PK was in decorating units. <laughs> Pastor Mike was in sound team, um, sound engineering. Um, you know, one day, PK was arranging decoration like this on a ladder. Then the ladder started shaking. I was looking at it like this. <laughs> the ladder started shaking, 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 shaking. He just fell. Bah! Hey, God, I said, God, I beg. This leg, that was no straight before. <laughs> I said, <laughs> You know, there were services in this same church that during praise and worship, I would play the drums and come and preach. Oh, you don't know? <laughs> I would drum. Not like I felt like, oh, I felt like it. Oh. The drummer did not come because <laughs> he must have been annoyed with the pay. <laughs> oh, no drummer, okay. Now we drum, then come and preach. <laughs> in the same simpler days. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes on what is more important. Please, are you listening to me? Yes, but I must also warn you, there's another extreme. Trust in Christ. Don't trust in riches. Don't also trust in poverty. Are you aware there are people that trust in poverty? They feel closer to God when they are poor. They feel holy. They are usually angry at people that have money. When souls are perishing, they always have good advice on generosity. <laughs> For money that is not their own. <laughs> you know, they, know, they don't go allow you be for this life. Even Jesus... Are you aware? Even Jesus, Judas was saying, all this money that could have been given to the poor, even Jesus. <laughs> he said, you have... And then I can tell you one thing for sure. Just like Judas, most of them are hypocrites. They are doing things behind the scenes. Judas wanted to steal the money, that's why. So, it's a known thing in psychology when you want something desperately and you can't have it, you hate people who do. And if you're not careful and you are stuck in that kind of theology, when blessings begin to come, using the word blessings loosely, like you have material stuff, are you aware there are some people who feel guilty for having stuff? <laughs> feel guilty for having stuff. Hallelujah. Has God given you something you are afraid to use? Because sometimes we've been taught wrong. A lot of us, a lot of us do not know what moderation is. For a lot of people, we think moderation is, ah, it's too expensive. Why will you use something like that? That's not moderation. It's idolatry. Anything you consider too big for you to own that was created by a man like you, you have idolized. Listen carefully. Did you hear what I said? Listen. A human being like you created something and you think you can't use it. No. So let me tell you what moderation is. Moderation is, I am so secure in God and in my assignment that I only desire things that I need for this assignment at this time that I no longer need any of these things to validate myself. Do you understand what I'm saying? So think about Jesus. If Jesus easily wanted to be the richest man in his day, he could. Someone that can turn waste water to wine, he could easily be the richest. But based on his understanding of his assignments, he was comfortable with what he had. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's moderation. I am so way beyond it, I no longer need to validate myself. Have you seen some kind of rich people 
They enter in one dimension. They stop dressing to impress. They start dressing. T-shirts. You know, all those tech bros. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know? No go confuse your hair power. <laughs> you drip past your hair power. <laughs> you don't dream. You don't confuse the airport. Ah, I thought maybe I heard wrong. God said to give him, but <laughs> hallelujah. So that's what moderation is. But at the end of the day, listen, the reason I'm saying all of this is this. And if I have to continue this some other time, I will because time is up. Please listen to this. God wants us to live from Eden. And for that to happen, our priorities have to be right. We must define greatness God's way. You can earn more money and be small. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you know what it means? Maybe there is a call on your life you didn't pay attention to because of money. You are small. Read the book of Revelations. God, Jesus is writing to the church. There was a particular church. He said, because you were said, it was said that you were poor, but you are rich. And there's another church. He said, because you said I am rich and I have need of nothing, but you are poor and wretched. There are many people who are called rich in the world that are poor in the sight of God. There are many people who are called poor in the world that are rich in the sight of God. And there are many people who are rich in the sight of men and are rich in the sight of God. <laughs> just, just saying. Just saying. Just saying. All I'm saying is get your priorities right. What can God do for you to help you spend adequate time in prayer? For it to be a priority every day and you don't feel like time is passing. That you can create space for everything in your life and prioritize God. Spend ample time praying, studying the word. As you get busier, some things have to give. Some good things will have to reduce. You will identify some good things that have become idols in your life. A wise man said, sin is not just wanting bad things. It's not just doing bad things. It is wanting good things badly. When, when, you, when you feel like this car validates me or this thing validates me, you, you, have, you, it, you have made an idol out of it. Even out of the things that God blesses you with. Please, are you listening to me? So, you must set your heart, prioritize properly. And when you do that, oh my God. And let me say this to you. If you have not done that in a while, you have not been with God in a while. Because there's something about being with God. The moment you stand before him, all the things, all the wrong priorities in your life will be evident instantly. Nobody will tell you. There is the convicting power of God's glory. Even as a man of God, you say, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. Nobody told you. You know by yourself. It becomes apparent. Please, are you listening to me? May this meeting be that kind of meeting for you. May the Lord remold and reshape us and realign our priorities. Please say loud amen. amen. You know, I stumbled on an old prophecy by, <laughs> you know, recently. A man I never knew, never knew in my life. I heard about him just about a month ago. A friend of mine came because he heard some of the prophetic words that God has given us. And he came and he said, do you know Bob Jones. I was like, never heard that name before. He said, you should check. Long story short, God told Bob Jones, not too long from now, Bob Jones is with the Lord anyway, and the Lord said it will happen after his time. Not too long from now, 
that there will be a mighty sweep of revival and one billion young people will come to the Lord. When I, when I, <laughs> I had to watch it for myself. When I watched it, my jaw hit the floor. You have to understand, <laughs> a lot of people do not know me. I'm a lot more simple than people, people think. Oh, I'm serious. I'm a lot more simple than people think. The only reason I bear apostle, for instance, is because God, I, I can begin to tell you the ample encounters, not just with God directly, prophetic words from other people, that forced me into it, almost literally. If you don't know that I prefer pastor, you don't know anything about me. <laughs> you don't know anything about me. <laughs> In a vision, I was going somewhere in a very narrow lobby and then coming in the opposite direction was a great man of God in this nation. And our paths crossed. And he stopped me, laid hands on me and said, because of the billion souls that God is going to use you to bless, receive it. And then I woke up with my body shaking violently, physically in my bed. And that's one out of many encounters. And trust me, I'm intelligent, I'm logical. I will not, in my right mind, say one billion souls. I promise. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> I promise you. And honestly speaking, God sees my heart. I don't care who gets the job done. All I know is God wants to do it. And God is going to use us. We'll, we will at least will be a part of it. And seeing that someone had prophesied it way beyond, from my calculation, way beyond, before our church started. Before our church started. Someone I only discovered weeks ago. God is up to something. And God wants you to first and foremost just enjoy his presence. Enjoy his presence. Enjoy his presence. I mean, not what he can give, but who he is. Let, let the Lord help you. Create an en environment that can help you. Even when you're walking, if you're doing maybe chores or you're pressing your clothes, play worship or something. Create that environment. Have friends that can encourage that environment. If you learn to live, from this place that I talked about in the morning and I'm re-emphasizing now, your life will change. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And there is something about this place. What everybody has been running, using all their energy and, and physical exertion to get. You will get it so cheap. When you lend your boat to God, God preaches from your boat. What took orders all night? You just say, cast your nets. I'm telling you what I know. Cast your net. Every opportunity you miss to serve God will not save you time. Never forget this. If you miss an opportunity to serve God, it will not save you time. If God calls you or would ask you to do something and then you tell God, okay, let me hustle first. They that wait upon the Lord. Are you listening to me? Shall renew their strength. 
they shall mount up with wings as eagles. It is only waiting on God that can give you the ability to do what a human being will not naturally do. Human beings don't fly. Don't you get it? If you go in your own strength, all you can do is trek or at best run. But if you wait, he will help you fly. I've seen it. Serving the Lord selflessly in this ministry. I think before we got married, allowance was 2,500 2, weekly. For the allowance to change, they baited me into it. They just said, Pastor, there's pastor's meeting. And I'm wondering, there's pastor's meeting. <laughs> I don't know that. Don't, don't be being called up. So <laughs> we didn't have office, so it was inside a vehicle. <laughs> Don't worry, we have come, we have come some. <laughs> That's where we used to have our meetings, inside the Siena. So someone would sit in front and look back. Then, <laughs> so they said, we have decided to increase your salary. And first and foremost, the increment was to 50K. You know? <laughs> you know, and I was like, well, why not wait for a while? The ministry has priorities, all of this, you know. <laughs> the first time I tr applied to the UK, I was denied. And the reason is simple. The report came back. If you're going to be in the UK three weeks, you're going to spend this estimated amount. How can you, when your salary is this? That's why I was denied. Are you listening to me? So it was then, and that, that was a good way for God to catch me, that, okay, if this salary will hinder this ministry that I'm sacrificing for, okay, let's, let's see what we can do. But I think I can tell you with all sense of humility, Except God didn't call you. He will come through for you. He will come through for you. Yes, he will come through for you. I can say this with all sense of humility. And the reason this matters to me is because I'm not one of those people that did ministry because they didn't have option. <laughs> I consider myself a very gifted man. I believe I have a lot of things that I can do very well. And to drop all of that to follow the Lord. Listen, if after 11 years of church ministry, we're just 200, I won't consider myself a failure. I mean, I won't regret obeying God. I won't. I, I, I don't see anything else to do with my life. So when you didn't mind going with no reward, but then you now look around, and like even those who went for reward, look at what God has done. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because what they did not tell you is that in that secret place I'm talking about, that most holy place, supernatural things happen. Aaron's rod will start budding. In agriculture, they told you every plant has to grow from the ground. Aaron's rod was not connected to the ground. Why are the leaves fresh? That's what I'm explaining to you. That's when you realize all your dreams are petty. All your dreams are petty. All your dreams. Give God your lifetime. You know that old song? And he would take care of you. He would take care of you. You will now realize your dreams are small. One day he will call you in the night and say, look at the stars. You, eh? Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. God is going to make a name for himself with your life. Come on, say a loud amen. amen. 
You will wait on him and he will renew your strength. Say loud amen. amen. Are you going to do that? Yes, Can you trust him? Yes, you know, there's a text where the Bible says, gather to me people who have a covenant with me by sacrifice. You know, when God talks about people like that, he knows not everybody. There are some people God can count on. I will find them at least once in a day in the place of prayer. At least once a day. Where God can brag about a man that, ah, Abraham, he will command his children. Are you get what I'm saying? People who have a covenant with me by sacrifice. There are some people, if God wants to get them to do something, it's not, it's not let me tell you something, there is nothing I cannot give the Lord. Nothing. 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 I know a few people who are like that. Nothing. Nothing. If he says drop it, it's dropped. It's dropped. And he knows people like that. And make no mistake, grace people, sacrifice is still powerful. Even in the advent of Christ, even in the advent of the Spirit. When an angel appears to Cornelius and says, your sacrifice has gone to God as a memorial, do you know what it means? You know, there was a lady. She, ah, to hear from God sometimes, it, it, it has consequences, I'm just telling you. There was a lady, broken home, two children, financially frustrated, got to, to such a bad state, he was just, he just fell on the floor and started crying. God, if you hear me, please send me help. Please, I need money. She's crying. I'm in the restroom. The Lord says, send this lady money now. Are you listening to me? <laughs> so, I send her money and she calls and she's crying. She said, God told you. I said, yes. She said, I was crying just now. In my mind, I said, no be your fault, you know, but. <laughs> I said, no be your fault. You know, I told the story the last year. There's a family. They were attending the church. The Lord asked them to give their only car, which they did. And so they trusted that God would give them back the car next month, in two months' time. One year passed, two years passed, three years passed. And then think about it, they had children. And every morning, every morning, part of their prayers, let's pray that God will give us a car. So now, something happened. They were praying in the, in the morning, and they said, let's pray that God will give us a car. And the daughter said, no, I'm not praying. Young girl, I think just two or so, said, I'm not praying. And he said, why? So it feels like God is not hearing us. And he doesn't answer our prayers. So now, that's an emergency case. God just looks. Who they hear? Who they listen? Hey, God. I say, here it go again. Cause cause. So I was just walking like this. I will never forget. The Lord says, buy that car sent to them today, today. The, the Lord told me in the afternoon, and he said it must, be hap it must happen that afternoon. By Kairos, someone had come two days before, you know, to my house, who visited me with an SUV. I said, oh, nice car. He said, oh, it's for sale. I just said, I don't need a car, you know. So, in the, so the Lord said, call him. <laughs> and then, you know, the worst part, they live around the same area. <laughs> so, so I now called. I said, eh, hey, that car, <laughs> how much do you say it is? So I went to my wife. I said, the Lord just spoke. And thank God she always supports. The Lord just spoke, we should give this car. Yeah. The Lord just spoke, we should give this car. She said, oh, praise God. Do you understand? <laughs> no go marry Hugo, ask you, what about my wig? What about my... <laughs> Let me tell you something. I have never felt led to give something. 
And she said, she even questioned once. I can tell you that. Her response is just, praise the Lord. And with joy, let's do it. You hear what I'm saying? But as a sharp married man, you too, you know that you go set to, do you understand? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, so I said, you live around that area, please go and drop, drop this car for them. And I, listen, it's a sight I will never forget. A full family, full grown man, his wife, his children, all of them in tears. Let me tell you something. Some people have blessed me. <laughs> yeah? Some people have blessed me. I know I'll be all right. Has your father blessed you before? I, I mean... <laughs> I mean blessing. <laughs> As your mom blessed you, you know, you know, three people, there, I think three or four people came together and they did something for me months ago. Hey, God. I go just wake up, look the thing, they scabash. On See? <laughs> Father, bless them. Use blessing to help boot them. Hit. You don't understand. <laughs> you know, you, you can't fail. Oh. <laughs> you can't fail. <laughs> you must make in this life. <laughs> you, know, you know, someone who did something for me, he was in Canada. When they mentioned it, I said, kneel, kneel down where you are. I said, we're still on the phone. Just kneel down. He said, can I bring my oil? You want me to start explaining you don't need oil? He said, bring it, open it. <laughs> I said all of that jokingly seriously. Let the Lord make a name for himself with your life. Come on, are you ready? Just say that to the Lord in a few minutes. Just ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. What will it be like when you stand before him? When you stand before him. I can tell you, he can make much of your life. Your five loaves can feed 5,000. He's a multiplier. Your rod can deliver a nation. He's a multiplier. Do business with this God in consecration. Just do what he will ask you to do. Just what he will ask you to do. Never say no to your maker. Never. 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 You might be seated, but please make this count and only say what you mean. I can assure you the Lord is listening to you right now. This is not an ordinary mountain. The Lord is listening to you right now. This is a place of encounter, a place of covenant, a place of encounter. Thank you. Thank you. Aye. Hmm. 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 You may be doing well, but you are not doing great. 
that's also something to talk to the Lord about. You know you should be doing better than you're doing. Lord, I receive your help. 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 Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If the Lord tells you, go, what do you do? If the Lord says to you, start, what do you do? Now, here's the one a lot of people are not ready for. If the Lord says, stop, what do you do? Even if he said, go, before. If he changes his mind, what do you do? I remember in 2012, we had a church in, in Otta. About 250 members at the time. And it was time to move to Ikotwegbe. So I stood in front of them. I said, it's been fun. It's been a blessing. It's the last time you will see me here. Uh, <laughs> do you understand? I know, I know most of you cannot come to Ikotu, but you won't see me here again. The cloud has moved. God bless you. It's been wonderful. Hugged all of them, prayed for all of them. I commend you. To, the, to God and the word of his grace able to build you up. Amen? That's it. Hallelujah. If the Lord says, hand over this work and go, I'll just come like this. <laughs> what is it? Ah, some of you. <laughs> When I stand before God, you go, day. <laughs> Will you help me explain? <laughs> Don't worry, I love ministry more than you. So it will, it will have to be the audible voice, if you know what. <laughs> but I can tell you one thing for sure. Whatever the Lord says, drop. I will drop. Amen, somebody. I'm just trying to give them some time. You good? All right. Um, you came from morning, you can as well be blessed. Amen, somebody? Amen. So I want you not to come for the evening session casually. Take out a few minutes, pray in the spirit, set your expectations. I have discovered that when you set expectations ahead of time, it gives direction to the prophetic. It's just an observation. It gives direction to the prophetic, you know, and just come ready to receive. Are you ready to receive? Listen, the sick will be healed. Yeah. Demons will be expelled. Yeah. And most importantly, you're going to live with an impartation that you will carry all the days of your life. Say loud, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So um, we're going to see you here. Can we start 5.30? Or you still want to start five? You want to start five? All right, good. I like you guys. I mean, that's cool. So, let's vote. Too. Wait. Uh -uh. Five, raise your hand. Hmm. We're going to need beaver for this place, though. 5.30, raise your hand. Uh, <laughs> see, you, see you by five. Hallelujah.